Okay, let's begin. My name is Christine Housel, and I am working in donor relations and strategic partnerships for globeethics.net based here in Geneva. Um, would you all put your mics on mute, please? Mute, mute. Thank you. Um, so welcome to the Building New Bridges Together, Strengthening Ethics in Higher Education After COVID-19 pre-conference live chat. This is the fifth and last live chat in our pre-conference um, series for this conference. And this one is a little different than the other four that we've had. This one is featuring our GlobeEthics.net library and publications. And so we're going to look together at how to use the GlobeEthics.net resources through our library and publications for your research and educational projects. So we're, we're privileged to have with us some of our own expert staff, as well as the guest who will introduce to you a little bit later. Just a few announcements. Um, this session is recorded, as all the others. And we do ask you to um, put yourself on mute. And if you wish to, well, we invite you heartily to use the comment box to introduce yourself, to just respond and react to what our speakers and presenters are saying, and to ask any questions. And we will have some moments to ask our presenters questions. Um, so with that being said, I'd like to introduce um, the first two presenters. They're going to talk about the GlobeEthics.net online library. And the first, we will have Mr. Andreas Waldbogel, who is our GlobeEthics.net head of online library. And he will introduce Ms. Anya Adriamasi, who is our GlobeEthics.net assistant library executive. And so, Andreas, you have the floor. Good afternoon from Switzerland. Can you hear me, see me, and also um, my presentation on your screen? Yes. Okay, then I warmly welcome you all to this session on the library and publications resources and services prepared by our team, Dr. Ines Haas, myself, and Mrs. Anja Andrea Massi. Let me start with the first part on the library. This is the front page of the library repository, which can be reached at the indicated address repository.globetics.net. My colleague Anja will show you later how to search and how to browse uh, the library online. Our library repository is built on DSpace, the most widely used open source software solution for academic institutional repositories in the world. The University of South Africa, UNISA is using it, the World Health Organization, WHO is using it, and the Institute, the Federal Institute of Technology of Zurich, the highest ranked uh, university in Switzerland is uh, also using it for their repository. About 40% of all open uh, repositories in the world are running on a DSpace instance. Just to give you an idea of the, uh, this uh, um, widely known uh, software tool. Thanks to our software provider and developer at Maya.com, a company based in Belgium, we have now a cloud-based, out-of-the-box and highly standardized repository installation that we do no longer need to maintain and upgrade ourselves. This will help us save money and make the system more sustainable. Furthermore, 
this system gives us greater visibility on the internet. It can be harvested by third parties and it is much more user friendly than the old one. But we have not only a state of the art repository, we do also have and always used to have a powerful OAI harvester developed by our long-standing IT provider Novologix that is able to harvest open access repositories from all over the world via the Open Archives Initiative protocol for metadata harvesting. This is, so to speak, our knowledge base from where we collect and import relevant materials through predefined keyword queries that we apply to build our special collections. For example, every month, thanks to the harvester, uh, we can import two or 3,000 uh, records. Currently, we do have more than 3.5 million items, 75 special collections and 140 journals focused mainly on applied ethics, educational ethics, philosophical and religious ethics. During the first half of this year, we counted an average number per month of more than 2000 users coming mainly from Asia, Europe and the United States, and to a fewer extent from Brazil and South Africa that viewed over 10,000 pages and downloaded 620 full texts. That is a significant increase of users and usage we are experiencing in this short period of time with our new system in place. Actually, we went online only last November with the new repository. Here you see the most comprehensive and largest collections we have on ethics in higher education, which contains over 140,000 items. You will see that afterwards with Anya. We distinguish between ethics collections, which include all kinds of applied ethics and educational collections with ethics in higher education, educational resources, research ethics and case studies. But we also have quite a number of institutional collections, foremost the Globetics.net collections, which contain of course the Globetics.net publications. But there are many others. Currently, we are building a collection jointly with the Macau Ritchie Institute, who is a close partner of ours in China. Just to show you that we can also uh, work with partners to host, for example, there on their behalf, um, an institutional collection. We also set up specifically for this venue, a conference collection that will feature your papers, posters or presentations and the final proceedings of this conference once published by us. As already mentioned, we collect many journal titles, mainly open access journals that we harvest or manually upload with the permission of the copyright holders. For example, the African Journal of Teacher Education. But there are many others specialized in the same disciplines, either applied ethics or educational ethics. I would like to highlight the journal Open Praxis published by ICDE the International Council for Distance Education of which Globetics.net is a member institution with highly interesting um, contribution to this topic of open educational resources, technology, uh, etc. 
As you may notice from the title list, there is not only English, though this is the predominant language of our library content, but also Spanish, Portuguese, and French, and many other languages represented in our library. Now my colleague, Mrs. Anja Andrea Masse, the library assistant and main cataloger of our library team, will show you online how to use and search our library. Anja, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Anja. Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Anja Andrea Massi, and I am the online library assistant in Globethics.net. And I am now going to present the main users and search functionalities in the library in the Globethics.net library. So first of all, I would like to know if uh, you can see my screen. Yes. Yes, we see yes. it. Okay, thank you. So um, to access the library, to access the library from the Globethics.net uh, website, then you select library home here, as you can see, and under collections, then let's click on browse. And just so you know, you can directly access the platform by uh, entering the URL https double dot double slash repository dot dot net. Now, let's discover the, the collections. So for example, let's see what's under educational collections as Andreas introduced it. Then we click on ethics in higher education. And you can see from that, that you can search within this collection. Basically, if this is the topic, if you want to focus on this topic, on the documents that, that, are, that, uh, that, uh, that uh, are dealing with, uh, with, uh, with this topic. But, first, but now, I mean, now let's, uh, let's search within the whole library. So let's search for ethics in higher education. Let's click ethics in higher education. And we search. And here you see that there is a huge number of results. So if you want to refine or narrow your search, then just add quotation marks like this and search. And now you can see that the number of results is much less than without quotation marks and that the phrase, the exact phrase ethics in higher education is included in the results. So there is also other ways to refine your search. For example, for, for example, you can use the advanced filters here. So click here and you have here a, a, a drop down list of metadata uh, on, uh, on the type of information you would like to find in your search. So for example, we search for author contributor we search for, let's click, let's say Obiora. And we click on apply. This is important for, for, the, for the search to be launched. And also, if you would like to have, I mean, if you would like to, to search for more, for, for more, um, for more for, to have more filters, to add more, for more filters, then actually you can just click on the plus sign here and for example, we search for um, publisher. And for this, we search for the exact name of uh, the publisher. That's why we're going to, to select equal, equals. Then we, for example, we type globethics.net, apply. And these are the results we, we have. And if you want to remove, to erase, to remove the filters, then just click on the little cross in the, in the, on the little cross in the blue tab here. That's it. Also, you can, um, you can, 
you, you, you know, on the, on the left hand side of the page, you can, you have facets here. Uh, the same, the same as, uh, as, uh, as, uh, as the filters, but with, uh, but with, uh, with uh, precise, precise, uh, precise metadata, basically. So for example, for example, you search for, um, for, for, for documents that are in Spanish, let's say. So we open it. And here, as you can see, this, uh, in this, there is only, uh, there are only documents, there are only results that actually show, uh, that actually show uh, documents in Spanish. Um, uh, also, uh, you, for example, you want to find, uh, you want, you, and also that applies to all, all the languages that you find here. And, uh, and also all the facets that you, that you can find here with, uh, with the number of results that you will have, will have if you click on it. And also if you want to, to restrict your, uh, your search to, to theological items, for example, then let's click on, uh, on let, then you click on Globe Theolib. This is the theological library of globethics.net. So let's click on it. And here, as you can see, these are uh, results. Uh, these, these are results that only deal uh, with, uh, with theology. And maybe you, you would like to export these, uh, these, um, these, to export these citations. So, so here you, you click on export, sorry. And here you have a list of formats that you can select. So depending on what reference manager you're using, then you then you can then you can uh, you can select the one the one that actually fits with your fit, you think fits with your reference manager. Then maybe you don't want to select them all to select everything here. So uh, if you want just to select the ones you would like to have, then click on selective export, and here you select the ones that you would like to appear in your, uh, in your, in your, in your library. Yes. So now you may want to, uh, you may want to share uh, your, uh, you may want to share an item, uh, may want to share an item on, on social media, yeah. through emails uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, to, to do so, you, you should open the link in, you should open the link first. And then you can see at the bottom right that you can share it on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on Twitter, by mail or other, other, other channels, other media that you would like to share. So yes, we have talked about uh, um, to talked about searching. Now we are going to talk about uh, to talk about uh, submitting. So you will need to log in first to be able to submit a document. And if you are not registered yet, then click here to register. So let's let's register. And just a reminder to everyone, please keep your microphones on mute. Thank you so much. So now we are on the platform, we are logged in and we are going to, um, and to, to, to do a new submission, then go to, then either, either you go to submissions here and you start a new submission or you select this, you select new submission and you start a new submission. And you are invited also to, to look, to have a look at the, uh, either uh, at the written, uh, su uh, written uh, submit guideline, submit guide, or the video, the video at the, at the address here or on, on YouTube as well uh, for, uh, for more detailed information. So now, 
now you, that you are logged in, you can uh, subscribe to new content. So for it, for, for this to do, for, for it to be possible, then you go under my account, you go to profile. And from this and the subscriptions, then here you have a drop down list of the collections and journals that that maybe that may interest you. So for example, we select eth the collection ethics in higher education. Yeah, select ethics in higher education. We add. And when, when it is done, then you can add as many, as many, as, as many, as many collections or journals as you wish. Just add, just search for it and add. And when you have done so, then update your profile. Yes. And so, and, and now you can, you, re, you can receive alerts uh, on uh, new content that will be submitted to, to, this, uh, do, to these collections or journals uh, for, your, uh, for, for you to know if a new, comment, if a new uh, content has been added to, to it. And that's it for me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anya. And now we're back to Andreas. And don't forget, if anybody has any questions, please um, write them in the chat box and we'll have a moment to bring them to our presenters. Thank you, Anya, for your presentation. I, this slide will, be the, will conclude the library presentation. Perhaps one of our nicest feature uh, of our new library is the author profile. Uh, if you are an author or contributor and your publications are present in our library, then our system allows to display them under your personal author profile, which you can edit, manage yourself. Let us uh, show you a sample here. For example, uh, look at the author profile of this author, Preciosa Maria Marta. You will see on her profile a short bio and underneath a list of all her publications which are referenced in our library. Such a profile will get fully indexed on Google search. That means this way your research works will be found by anybody on the internet. And this way you may promote your research work more widely and globally via our library platform. So we just would like to invite you to make available your papers in our library repository under your personal profile and hope that you will enjoy using our library. Thank you so Thank much, you. Um, Anya and Andreas. And um, I, I've noted in the chat and I note here that Anya has made some tutorials reviewing some of this information which are available on the website. And the, um, this presentation will be available as a conference document following. There is one question. Um, to have access to the online library, is it necessary to have a, a subscription or a paid membership? No, everything is free of access. So anybody can just uh, use it online for free. There is some content which uh, might be restricted to registered pa participants or registered users. And for this purpose, uh, you need to uh, log in or if you have not uh, a, an account yet, just create one on, on, on the library platform. But then you are you have a uh, free access to all of our content. So another question: um, Are the books published by Globe Ethics listed 
on Amazon. We're going to hear a little more about publications um, later, so maybe we reserve that one. Um, Ignace, take note. And, I, and we have a question. How are the papers accepted? Are there any conditions for acceptance and submission if you want to submit one of your own papers? On the library side, you are free to submit uh, what, what, uh, whatever you would like. Um, so we have no um, submission uh, workflow uh, in place. The only thing is that um, you have to, to comply with, uh, uh, you have to, to be clear with the copyright and uh, uh, you are responsible of the use of, uh, of the copyright. And, and we also uh, look at, um, at the content if it, uh, if it complies also with, the, with, with our um, acquisition uh, uh, development policy. And if, uh, I mean, if there would be content which is uh, uh, contrary to the purpose of our, uh, of globetics.net, of course, then we would keep the, um, uh, reserve the right to, to remove content. But it's a free platform, you can uh, deposit and we, we really would like to encourage you to do that uh, in order to share your work uh, uh, on, on globally on, on, on our platform. And you've kind of answered this, but I'll, I'll, I'll put it forward again. Um, if I want to submit a paper which has been published somewhere else, can I? Of course uh, you can, but you need to, to make sure that you have the right to do so. So uh, it, it, it depends on, on the agreement you have um, um, made with, with the publisher. If the publisher allows you to, to deposit, for example, a copy of your work uh, on, a, on, an, um, on an open repository or institutional repository like globetics.net, uh, then uh, you're free to do so. If the publisher doesn't allow, then of course uh, uh, you, you won't be allowed. So it's, it's your responsibility to, to, to clear that. And Andreas, how long does it take to get it published? Well, this is uh, instantly. So if uh, Anya, Anya showed you uh, how to submit, uh, how to start to submit. So as soon as you have uh, um, gone through the submission process, uh, it is uh, uh, instantly online on the library. But if, if the question yeah. is, um, for a book publication with globetics.net, then my colleague uh, uh, can answer uh, you that question, um, of course. Um, we, we have another question, I think, about our publications platform, which I'll reserve as well um, for our next moment. But a question, is the publication Scopus Index or ISI Index? I'm not sure if I understand this question. Which, which index should apply to, to our publications? Okay. I mean, we, we do not, um, we are not a citation index uh, like uh, Scopus or ISI uh, or Web of Science. Um, uh, we are just uh, an institutional repository which is open to all and uh, collects uh, documentation, research on ethic, applied ethics, etc. So once you are, you are referenced in our library, of course, uh, with our system, you will be indexed by Google, Google Scholar even. Uh, so this gives you also uh, more visibility uh, for, for your papers. Um, can we edit and send in a revised version of the article book we have already sent in? Of course. 
Okay. And how do you control the explosion of information if there's no quality control, such as in regard to writing an article? You have to distinguish between the library repository and the publications program. So if you want to get published by Globetics.net as a book, um, then of course it is peer reviewed and uh, um, but this is not the case uh, in, in the library. We have only um, a limited number of staff. So I'm the only uh, um, full-time uh, manager of the library. Um, you can imagine we can, if we harvest 3 million uh, documents, we can, I cannot uh, monitor every, every document which is harvested. What we can do is to, as I try to explain, to, 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 to define our queries as precise as possible to get the most relevant uh, materials in our library. And you can feed the library with your, uh, with relevant materials. And um, yeah, our library is so good as what, what, what uh, you contribute to it and what we collect from what is available uh, open access. But we cannot control uh, all the information which is circulating on, on in the world. And so just to um, clarify again, we're going to move in just a moment to, to the globeethics.net publications uh, department, you know, so we are actually initiating some publications which we, or, or accepting some suggestions from you. And Ignaz Haas will tell us about that in a moment. Are there any final questions? Anya, do you have any final comments you'd like to make? Um, no, just, just that if you, as Andrea said, if we are happy to have, to receive, we are inviting you to, to visit the, li the library and submit as well. And, uh, and uh, just, and visit the, and uh, watch the videos that are on YouTube and also on the, on the website of, on the website of the, on the repository of the library. So this will, this, I, I'm sure it will help you to, to, to have more detailed information on this. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Lots to explore and discover, and we're here to assist you. And so if you, if you come to it and have some questions, Anya and Ignace are there for you. Yes, that's the question. You contact any of us and we'll, we'll put you in the direction of Anya and uh, Andreas for the library, for library questions. Um, so right now, we're gonna move to another moment. We have um, a guest uh, speaker with us today. Uh, we have Dr. Tilatama Ray, who is from India, and she is a librarian who registered for this conference. And we thought, oh, let's bring her into this session to learn from her and have some reflection from her. So she is a librarian at Budge Budge Institute of Technology, as well as a guest lecturer at the University of Calcutta's Department of Languages. And she will address the question of her perspective of current challenges and opportunities in providing resources for research from the perspective of a librarian. And so please, Dr. Ray. Thank you, Christine. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, it's uh, one thing that uh, the library, the technology is interesting right now. We are talking about harvesting, uh, that is OAI uh, PMH, and we are talking about uh, this space, the, and we are also talking about the uh, sushi harvesting. Hello. Yes. Can you hear me clearly? We hear you. Okay, okay. And uh, that's harvesting. Uh, Anya has uh, told us that a collection of metadata. 
this is uh, the harvesting but uh, there's a question how do you control the quality we are somehow somebody is putting their data and how do you control the quality so that we can put it or we can harvest it in our open access system a very important job i think and uh, other thing is uh, that's uh, NSDL. We know NSDL is a very um, uh, well-known repository and which use this harvesting that is Digital Public Library of America. This is also a well-known harvester and open languages archive community, etc. And uh, about the recent development, we know that the folio, that folio management. The folio, how uh, does it differ from other? That folio is a uh, collaboration of libraries, developers, and vendors. So uh, my question is, uh, 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 how do you manage all these three things? How libraries, uh, there are some uh, specific role of librarians, and there are some specific low, uh, roles of uh, developers, and uh, as well the vendors. So how they coordinate in the folio management? Do you have any uh, recommendations from your own experience? Uh, actually, I think the librarian's role is to um, expertise in the subject area. And the developers, they also uh, play the role intermediary of librarians and the vendors. What the vendors are asking for and how the librarians uh, recommend the repository that it should be like this or it should be like that, whatever. And vendors, they're looking the package from the customer's point of view. So uh, these are the roles, I think. And my question is, uh, how do you manage uh, this three, um, three uh, what we, we can say, the three per perspectives? And another, uh, my uh, question is, that do you have any paper clippings in your repository? Sometimes uh, we sold out the papers and those information are uh, missing. But how do you have any repository of paper clippings? Am I clear, Christine? Questions? Andreas or, or Anya, do you have a comment? Um, th thank you very much. Uh, for these, these are um, uh, multiple questions um, which I try to answer. Um, first of all, the quality of the OAI data is, uh, that's, that's really um, uh, uh, a sensitive um, uh, question uh, because uh, yeah, with, with the system we have, uh, um, we have in place, we can we can harvest millions of of data, and the only way to to um, to guarantee the quality is to to monitor our keywords, which um, query uh, all the repositories, and also to to select the the good repositories uh, from the bad repositories. But we are unable to um, to guarantee. I mean, we cannot control each uh, um, metadata uh, manually. That's uh, that's just impossible. But our our philosophy is to um, to harvest. Um, it's better to have uh, um, at least some uh, metadata. Then no metadata at all in the library because even if you have, for example, uh, metadata, um, 
but uh, no link to the full text, for example, um, is better to have than uh, no information at all. Um, you have 30 seconds. Okay, then uh, the roles of the librarians is, uh, uh, I mean, uh, also an important question. First of all, you need to have professional librarians. Um, and uh, in order to have an open uh, uh, access library, you need, you need a repository manager, you need a, a, a data librarian, you need um, a cataloger, uh, you need uh, an indexer, um, and and, uh, and, a, and a project manager to to to, <laughs> to manage uh, all all uh, projects um, with partners or um, partner repositories, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, do we have paper clippings? No, we we do not uh, collect uh, newspapers, for example. We we are an academic, or we want to be an academic platform. So with academic content and uh, um, uh, we have not uh, the possibility to, 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 to monitor the, the media and the press and uh, to, 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 to upload uh, uh, what you can also find uh, on Google um, News, for example, or uh, other media platform. Thank you, Andreas. And the, you mentioned one, one, one of uh, a library management system uh, called Folio. This is a new, uh, a new system. I, I, I have uh, heard about it. Um, it's, it's maybe uh, uh, good for, for um, a hybrid library. We are a, a pure online library, so Folio would not be appropriate for, for, for our repository. Okay, we need to move on. Thank you. You're, uh, thank you very much for your question. Yeah, very good questions. Thank you, Tilatama. And you're, you're getting an a invaluable insight into the, the b between experts, you know, about the, the all, some of the challenges and the many opportunities of the online library and globeethics.net approach to it. Thank you very much. And now we welcome Dr. Ignaz Haas who is the globeethics.net publications manager and a trained philosopher. And he will um, bring to us more insights on globeethics.net publications department and the mission of ETHICS ethics, Ignaz. Thank you, Christine. Um, let's introduce globeethics.net publications. Um, Victoria, if you could uh, perhaps just launch the, the PowerPoint uh, first slide. Uh, Global Ethicsnet Publications is all about these uh, uh, ethics acronyms. Uh, we, um, as a publisher, um, are of course. Um, concerned by empowerment. Second slide, thank you. Empowerment is developing talents. And as you can see on this slide, we uh, showed the thesis series, uh, one of the, the, the recent books that we just launched uh, this year uh, on sustainable peace building strategies. Uh, which is a collaboration with, with um, um, an author from the Global South, from, from Kenya. Um, the, the, the idea is, is really to, um, to get into dialogue with, uh, with authors from all over the world and, um, and having the opportunity for junior um, uh, academics or um, uh, students who are just finishing their PhDs to, uh, to get published by Govetixnet. And of course, we have criteria of quality. Um, we, uh, we have a list of these criteria of quality and I will not go into details, perhaps for the questions later, but uh, the, the idea is I think a bright uh, and um, very successful idea as we have published uh, 33 volumes actually in this series uh, in, uh, in, in different languages. 
Uh, next slide. So ethics is empowerment, but ethics is also um, about uh, making the uh, the work of of you uh, authors accessible to an international audience. And uh, as Globe Ethics Net, we of course uh, are concerned by this perspective um, of a global community of research um, uh, and. Um, we uh, are committed to give you uh, a prominent place in 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 this community um with with the means that we have um we welcome you into the family of globetics net authors uh, uh and um we are of course uh focusing on um morality value humanity and education uh um uh, and um we would welcome uh works in applied ethics in ethics in education and theology and philosophy uh in this global ethics net thesis series which is um uh con which is concerned by these thesis next slide again the cover of uh of this book uh, as you can see um we um we we synthesize uh, um, um many different um concepts in a book um uh, in particular when it's a published phd and i think this gives you a, a snapshot of the richness of this type of uh of publication which is really um going and uh, going very deep into um uh, research and uh, higher education content next slide t t uh, in ethics so it's the second letter t as transformation placing common good before self-interest mm -hmm. that's our mission and i've chosen this uh, particular uh, book cover uh, which is uh, from a design perspective, I would say very audacious and uh, innovative. As you can see, uh, we are not in all the parts of the world um, accustomed to see uh, this type of design, but it's uh, coming from uh, China and we want to, um, to welcome uh, this um, design sensibility. And so it's an original creation also from a, a, an artist from, from China. Uh, and um, the book is um, um, part of the Agape series. Uh, this is a new series that we have been um, introducing this year. Uh, and um, next slide. T uh, as transformation is, of course, um, transforming institutions and individuals through capacity building uh, and ethics education. So ethics education is um, it's about extending our perspective by strategies of insight, working on individual and uh, institutional resistances also sometimes, uh, breaking up of outdated patterns, um, if we dare, and so um, we can uh, the, we can see what what new can emerge by uh, opening ourselves to uh, self transformation. Um, this is of course uh, about thoughts and practices, and some of our series will be oriented more um, on theoretical reflections. So. Uh, as the thesis series is a good, a good example. Others will be more on the practical side. Next slide. Genuine experience of um, vital areas of applied ethics with a focus on common good. Uh, so we, uh, we, we are um, heavily involved um, to publish uh, works in applied ethics, 
in the education uh, sector and in the research sector in particular, uh, but also many other sectors as professional sectors. And this Agape uh, series, you see the link uh, below, is a good example. It's um, uh, transformative also because it is um, proposing a genuine um, new experience about business uh, and entrepreneurship related Christian ethics. So as you see, uh, it's a great synthesis and it's uh, daring something new. Next slide. Here you see the cover uh, more in detail. Uh, the, the cover of this Agape series, uh, Agape Economy is the title. This book is in Chinese um, and uh, it's in um, panorama position. So uh, the normal uh, position of this uh, cover is of course uh, portraits. Next slide. H, H is um, the third letter of ethics, our mission as Globetics.net. H stands for holistic approach. Holistic means understanding in-depth correlations. And I've chosen this uh, particular book project, which is also um, a series, the, the Ethical uh, Sieve series. Uh, this book uh, for, for, um, um, for, for, for explaining the concept of holistic approach because, next slide, holistic uh, could be understood from two different points of view. Uh, we, could we could understand holistic from an encyclopedic point of view. What does that mean? That means um, there is a, a, a progress uh, toward knowledge on applied ethics, uh, which is mapped by, by application of precise methods. So we, we try to uh, increase knowledge uh, in, in um, applied ethics, uh, applying ethics in different disciplines. So you could, you know, uh, as um, um, economists, for instance, for this book, uh, be interested by um, various ways of applying ethics in the business sector and also various methods because obviously um, what um, has to do with the quality and the intellectual quality of the book is, um, is, is really uh, related to uh, how the methods uh, of, um, um, uh, of knowledge are uh, being used and also offering a pluralistic perspective on that. And this is the second way of understanding holistic is to, uh, to understand that, um, uh, next slide, holistic can be uh, genealogical. So genealogical, uh, um, I, I would uh, define geological as allowing a multiplicity of perspectives. So it's related to geographical, uh, obviously cultural, contextual particularities, um, not only particularities, but I would say contexts. And, um, and these different contexts are opening to new fundamental levels of reasoning based on this diversity. And we need to be receptive and uh, we need to listen uh, to, these, um, to these propositions uh, and this gives us a, a, a name at a better understanding of in-depth correlations. Um, holistic is, um, as a conclusion, uh, really the contextual way to uh, grasp the global uh, environment in which we live, um, the different geographical contexts, the cultural context, and uh, not to speak about the religious uh, context as well and the philosophical context. Next slide. Ignas, you have about five minutes. Thank you, Christine. Here we have the cover of uh, Changing Frontiers of Ethics in Finance. So this book uh, that I um, have chosen as example for this holistic approach, you can, of, of course, um, and you are invited to take a look into the book and you will discover uh, how you can really understand um, business ethics in, uh, in, in business ethics in finance. Uh, in in uh, interesting ways, um, uh, in, uh, having in in uh, in, uh, in mind that 
uh, various methods are possible uh, to to uh, to define common good in this uh, sector. Next slide. I stands for the integrity. Um, I have chosen uh, this book cover, uh, Human Rights, Religious Freedom and Face of Faith, uh, which is a, a collaboration with uh, Keck. Um, integrity is making values based decisions and behaviors. Integrity is a very important uh, value. Next slide. Um, Integrity it has to do with publication uh, and research ethics um, by excellence because it is only if you are motivated by integrity that uh, you are having responsible behaviors uh, as a researcher, as publisher, and uh, also in, in, in the, the various other responsibilities you have uh, in the edu higher education sector that, that you can achieve the quality uh, that uh, is needed for 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 um, uh, for books in the higher education um, uh, sector, and and so um, integrity is really a key component of um, our mission and our values. Next slide. Globetics Net publishes a, va a various range of, um, of of books that are around this um, this value. And, uh, I can mention. Uh, human rights related um, um, texts as the one we just uh, saw and we will we will see on the next slide and um, and there are many other ways of, of course uh, to to uh, focus on integrity as focusing on responsible leadership responsibility being related to integrity next slide we see here the, the cover of uh, this collaboration with the CAC uh, CAC stands for uh, Conference of European Churches, and we are developing a whole series with them of books, not only individual books. Next slide. C stands for competence. Competence, of course, um, uh, is about focusing on innovative and collective proficiency. Next slide. And um, competency is in research, is in, in teaching practices and uh, also in the ethics across the disciplines and uh, the example that I've chosen here water ethics gives a good idea uh, how you can have an empirical uh, practice uh, about water uh, sharing um, fair share to water resources water risks water costs etc etc so very empirical and at the same time uh, you have um, you have also theoretical um, uh, and normative discussions around uh, what is a fair uh, price for water, is water uh, uh, an inalienable right, for instance. Next slide. Uh, S is the last letter is uh, the, of ethics. Sustainability standing for one world. Uh, we have here the cover of Blue Ethics which is a book uh, on, on um, environmental ethics. Next slide. Um, ethics as sustainability. We, we care for sustainable ways of making your research and best practices, lifelong learning on, uh, on ethics known. So this is our commitment. It's really uh, you, is your work and how um, we can uh, make everything which is possible uh, to um, to aim at a value uh, pluralism in academic uh, as a, an academic publisher so meaning opening ourselves to values and a dialogue across uh, tradition and cultures and at the same time keeping this commitment for sustainability which is uh, reminding us that uh, each of us um, uh, is um, uh, value um, uh, related but is praxis dependent so uh, we are living in the world that we are building across our practices and so it doesn't contradict the plurality to say that we are standing up for one world next slide uh, this is and i finish uh, by that the, the practice series by excellence where we would display um, the the these very practical um, ways of dealing with applied ethics as i mentioned uh, with water ethics but there are uh, a whole list of areas where we have been 
um, dealing with practical matters. Uh, and in higher education, there are also many. Next slide. So uh, I take now the opportunity, um, concluding, uh, by mentioning that we have post-conference opportunities that are um, opening. Uh, we uh, want to make your research known by a large scientific community. So we really want uh, you to drop us an email to our ad uh, email address that is uh, on the screen. And um, we will also share a call for paper. So there will be a call for paper um, addressed sent tomorrow uh, by Obiora Ike, our executive director and director of publications. And so really you are welcome to participate. And now I, I leave the floor to uh, Christine. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ignace, but don't turn your, your microphone off yet. Um, I have a question for you. Um, can I get these books that globeethics.net is publishing for free? Can I buy them? Thank you for the question. We are a kind of hybrid publisher, meaning that we have an online copy that is open access uh, and uh, you can uh, not only uh, download it for free um, and um, and keep the PDF version of this book uh, on your computer, but you can also distribute it and, and really um, uh, share this, uh, this work. Uh, we use a license, which is a Creative Commons license uh, 4.0 um, which um, um, has some conditions for, for, for sharing uh, and distributing uh, the, the work. So you, you need to uh, not transform the work. So you need to uh, keep the work uh, share alike. You need to uh, not use it in a commercial way for, for the online version, the, the open access version. So you can distribute it, but don't sell, please, the, 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 the web version. And um, and, and you need, of course, to reference correctly uh, the author, the publisher, the title. So uh, all the metadata needs to be uh, exactly uh, uh, referenced or uh, communicated, informed. And we have the print copy. The print copy is a kind of commercial book, if you would want to, to say so. Uh, I prefer traditional publisher way of publishing. Uh, why is it so? Well. Uh, we sell the books um, at a very affordable price. So it's not about making money. We are a non-profit uh, organization. Uh, our books are really um, sold as print copies because people are having a, a need for these print copies, in particular in the academic world. So we, we like to have print copies also. That's one. Second is about promotion. We want to make you known to the community. Uh, the academic community. So this is a very important medium, the print copies. And um, third, we are not a, a so traditional publisher because we are uh, using um, on-demand type of publishing. So we are not building large stocks of print copies, but only print what is needed. And we also um, enter in dialogue with the authors about contracts, about the conditions for publishing with us. But uh, this is, I think, a, another question. Thank you very much. With your, with your permission, um, participants, I'm, I'm going to bring a couple more questions to Ignace because I think this is very relevant for many of us. Um, so we're, we're just past 1600 Geneva time, and let's just go for another five minutes or so. I actually want to move on to that question that you were beginning to discuss, Ignace. What if I want to publish with globeethics.net? What if I want to publish you know, an article or what if I have a book idea? What do I do? Thank you, Christine. Well, um, the, the, the very straightforward answer to this question is just drop me an email. Thank you. <laughs> Then, uh, of course, uh, we are publishing books, so it would be preferable to have a concept of a book if you want really to plan from scratch a book project with me. This is possible. Um, second, you can, of course, for instance, with the thesis, you can also uh, start a conversation with me on a book project where you have already a manuscript which is ready. 
and um, we will sit down together. I will take a look at the manus and I will make an estimation of the costs. Um, normally, um, you will have a good deal. Why? Because we have two range of prices. We have a range of price for Global North and Global South. And really, the, the price range for Global South is is, is just unbeatable. So um, that, that's, that's the second. The third is, um, well, we are not the only publisher and there is a wide uh, concurrence um, and um, competition. But what we want to do is um, to publish books because in the domain of, um, of books uh, and in particular open access books, um, it, there is a niche. There is a niche for uh, for making people uh, pub, uh, making uh, authors known, and um, and and so uh, we have been successful um, so far, having uh, over a million uh, seven hundred thousand downloads of our of our books. Um, yes, you can publish with us. It has a cost. It has a modest cost. Um, it, ha it gives you uh, great opportunities. We are having events all around the world, uh, all along the year, with high in higher education institutions, and we bring the books that uh, we have been doing with you to these events. We promote these uh, books, as you know, uh, as academic, that um, the these non-fictions uh, concern mainly really peers, so it is very important to have the right community. Uh, and uh, we are really focusing on uh, how to make your, your work known to the right community by uh, going um, uh, to the, the institutions, by having a, a, a wide network of institutions and, and really concrete projects with these institutions. So this gives you really an opportunity that, you know, uh, an online publisher that would be an open access um, uh, publisher coming from nowhere would not offer because having the network that we are having, the consortium of uh, universities and uh, inst uh, higher education institutions that we have is not so simply given. It's something you build step by step. Perhaps um, I stop now and, and I'm, I'm expecting other questions eventually. Just a, a a couple of questions um, for a short answer, a very short answer. Can I buy the hard copies on Amazon? And if, if through this Creative Commons, um, you know, rights, wouldn't that give access for anyone to use our research work as theirs? Will our works be plagiarized? Thank you, Christine. Perhaps I start by the, 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 the last. Um, plagiarism is, is a problem. Uh, plagiarism is a problem that we deal with uh, with regard to the author and the manuscript that he is submitting to us. So we scan every manuscript uh, using a sophisticated software, Compilatio. And, um, and, 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 and I was talking about integrity and responsibility in research. This is exactly about that. So uh, you, you can't uh, have half measures with, with the plagiarism. We, we, we really detect plagiarism. We enter in dialogue with the author who uh, might have committed plagiarism and we resolve the issue. And there, there will not be any uh, book published by Globetics.net that, that would uh, risk any uh, reputation issue with plagiarism. Uh, then, uh, what about um, third parties plagiarizing our work? Well, that's more difficult to control, you know, if someone, because it's open access uh, or not, because you can plagiarize also commercial content easily, would, would plagiarize yourself? Well, uh, uh, a, a book of Globetics.net, we, uh, we, we, um, we can't control that uh, totally. But, uh, but we uh, remain uh, at your disposition. Uh, if you can see and witness any of these abusers, please notify us and we will do the necessary and the needed to, uh, to, to tackle the issue. Uh, about the um, publication with us uh, and um, uh, how is it accessible on um, uh, Amazon, yes, your books are accessible on Amazon. It's not that uh, we particularly uh, want to promote Amazon. We all are aware about uh, the, the, um, the cost of uh, this collaboration. Uh, because 
yes, I will do very short. Uh, be, because, because of course, uh, um, um, Amazon is, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a very large group and, and has questionable uh, uh, behaviors uh, from, from a, um, a commercial point of view uh, in certain ways. But uh, Amazon is also very helpful to, uh, to, to, uh, uh, to promote your, your, your books in, in, uh, in a global market where uh, Amazon is, is uh, accessible from every places in the world very easily. And so your books, yes, will be uh, automatically uh, uploaded on Amazon. You can buy your books at auto price and also at self price, which is half price of what will be displayed on Amazon. And one final question. Um, is there any criteria of language or language and also area or thematic restriction in the publications? Thank you, Christine. Language is, uh, <laughs> is the bubble tower <laughs> of the publishers. No, it's, we want to, to be committed to, to, to plurality, as I said, uh, value pluralism. Uh, and this applies in culture, and what well, applies in culture applies in linguistic matters. So, uh, but it's uh, hard work. We have been publishing in seven different languages. Uh, we have uh, a balance also of genders, which is quite accept acceptable uh, through our publications. We, uh, we don't want to restrict ourselves. Um, most of our books are, um, are, are in English and um, many are in French, Spanish and, uh, and, and some in German, Indonesian and Chinese. But you have also uh, other languages uh, that have been uh, published and, uh, and, and so yes, we are open. Uh, we have been even publishing in Farsi, so you, you know, we, we, can, we can do the work. Thank you so much, Ignace. Um, we can, you know, you, you can continue the discussion directly with Ignace, you know, if you have questions or if you have ideas. Um, we had an earlier question uh, around, you know, will Globe Ethics publish articles uh, online around ethics? Well, I, I take the liberty of just, you know, answering that one by saying that that's really our core mission. And, that's really the core mission of the publications department, as well as our whole organization. It's to highlight ethics and specifically applied ethics on different subjects, to bring uh, experts and researchers together to publish emerging thinkers as well. We thank you all for being with us today. Um, thank you so much to our speakers, our presenters, our experts for the uh, training and orientation they've given us on some of the globe ethics tools and also some of the reflection on the opportunities and challenges of research publication and library life online. Um, we thank you Andreas, Anya, Tilotama and Ignace. Uh, we thank you especially participants for being with us today and a few announcements. Um, you are, you, the conference website is, is up and running. You're, you're warmly encouraged to continue to go to the discussion forum and interact with other conference participants there. You, it is still possible to read and vote on the digital papers and virtual posters you like the best and the award winners, first, second, and third place will be announced at our conference tomorrow. And then finally, our conference is tomorrow, Thursday, 25 June, um, at, this, at this time, but for a couple hours longer. So it's 1500 to 1800, three hours, um, beginning at 1500, 3 p.m. Geneva time. And the, please note that it will not be a live Zoom chat like this, it will be a webinar and a separate link, a different link will be sent to you. So instructions and a different link will be sent to you. So please uh, join us for the conference tomorrow if you're able. All of these will, you know, are being recorded and will be made available later um, up on the website. Again, um, thank you for being here and thank you for participating in this wonderful conference and pre-conference experience. If you wish, you, you're, you're welcome to turn on your mics now, turn off your mute and say hello just before we end.
Hello, everybody. Thank you for all the good work you are doing in Geneva. Thank you, Thank so you much. for your attention and contributions. Thank you very much for your attendance. See you tomorrow, undoubtedly. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Uh, Thank you, everybody. Uh, it's so good to, to see you. We are grateful to the presenter. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Thank you, tomorrow. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Thank you, tomorrow. Thank you, tomorrow. Thank you so much. Hello, Herbert. Hello, Daniel. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Looking forward to tomorrow. Bye. Bye. We are too. Wonderful lineup. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you See you, Leah. Uh, Thank you too. See you later. Thank you, Herbert. Thank you, Andreas. All the best. God bless. Very good presentation there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anya, thank you for the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, thank you to you for your for your attention. <laughs> thank you. Najib, I see your hand up. <laughs> you can talk if you wish. Yeah, thank you so much for your uh, nice uh, conference. I hope I will join you tomorrow. Uh, look forward to seeing you online. Okay, it's so nice to be here together. Hi, how are you, Christine? Hi, I'm very well. Good to see you. Me too, fine. And we enjoyed a lot in the conference. I'm so glad. Yeah, it's, it's a pleasure and an honor just to see all of you from all over the world. It's yeah. really something. Thank you. I, I Thank know you. We, we, want to, we want to, you know, <laughs> have coffee now. We want to go and have coffee. <laughs> yeah, we will have a virtual coffee. <laughs> we want to, yes, yes, we want to have a yeah, share it. <laughs> or tea. <laughs> okay. It's, really it's nice. It's, it's nice. It's nice having these meetings from our comfort of our, the comfort of our homes. Yeah, that's also but, true. Yeah. But we miss yeah. the chocolate in Geneva. Ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Christine. Yes. I'm very happy. It has been a pleasure to meet all of you. So from happy. across the world. Yeah, really, really a pleasure. And Thanks, thank you very Bye, much. Christine, I hope we meet you meet tomorrow. tomorrow. Yes, I hope so. Tomorrow. I hope so. Okay, thank see you, Christian. See you tomorrow. So good to see you. See you tomorrow. Yeah, thank you. I remember Busan. How about? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Bye -bye. See you tomorrow. Thank you. See you. Yes. Bye, everybody. All right. Reluctantly, see you tomorrow. We'll reluctantly, we'll close Bye. now, and we'll see you online tomorrow and on the discussion forum. Bye. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everybody. Mm-hmm.